Join us for a review of the Renault Arcana. Let's go! In the front, the Renault Arcana shows the friendly Renault face. Then the daytime running lights see here forms this either C on the one hand or opposite C form. The main headlamp unit comes with LED as standard. This one being the RS line is a sporty design pack. So we have this mesh structure in black in the lower area for more you know, strong design in the lower area right here. The length is at 4 meters 57. 15 foot or 180 inches so that's the lengthwise between the Kacha and the Coleos and here when I have the key in my pocket you see here the car opens itself also greetings to put out the side mirrors in a contrasting style yeah and again this really screaming out orange color for the day some strong shoulders right there in this SUV coupe styling and yeah if you think about it, you could get 10 of these or one Lamborghini Euros yeah that's your choice. <laughs> wheels come from 17 inch to 18 inch. These here are the optional 18 inch wheels in black design. And in the rear, we can see a modern light signature. You can see here the light goes right there. So, and also stretched, stretching the width of the vehicle. Then you have in the RS line here, this black contrasting lip. Lower end here, this is like a something graphic, I don't know, but this here. <laughs> Fake exhaust police, auto fuel fake exhaust police is in place because, yeah, this is a pure case of a fake exhaust. Under the hood, first of all, gas struts. We hardly ever see that at this price point. Turbo petrol engine, four cylinders, 140 horsepower or 160. This is the lower spec here for today. Always made it with the automatic gearbox, a dual clutch transmission, front wheel drive only. Mild hybrid system for some regenerative braking. And then there will also be the 1.6 naturally aspirated petrol engine. This is an inbuilt hybrid with a bigger battery, not that big of course, so a true hybrid like for example Toyota is using battery size wise, but then rather with the system we already know from Honda, with a hybrid system that can drive the front wheels in an electric way, but that can also be driven directly from a combustion engine or where the combustion engine can also serve as a generator depending on the speed you are driving always picking the most efficient mode and it's still then front wheel drive but with two electric motors one serving then as a generator as a transmission for the generator so to speak and the other then directly to drive the wheels. If you are a Renault customer, you know, Renault had these key cards even before Tesla had them. Yeah, the Tesla one is really like a credit card. This one is just a very slim key fob. Nothing new with Renault, but actually quite good to put it in your pocket. But you can also use it with keyless entry here, closing it with the button right here. And then I step away from the vehicle for a second that the vehicle thinks I'm gone, but I'll be back.
Jawohl. So, and then I come back and the car greets me with folding out the side mirrors and I don't have to put my hand on the inside to open it. It's already open right now and I can show you the door closing sound, which is somewhat okay. Yeah, actually quite good. Why not? Then inside of the doors, RS line, we have the soft touch materials right here, red contrast stitches then in this sport design line, then also with this carbon fiber styling insert, once again soft plush here, and we have the optional Bose sound system, RS line entry batch, RS line floor mats down there, and also the steering wheel with the yellow contrast stitches on the inside, perforation left and right, electric seat control right here, front and also on the back part, electric control here also of the lumbar support. I usually leave it all out, you know, like back, I don't put it in. <laughs> then the steering wheel up and down, in and out, a smooth process and we also have some nice shifting levers right here. Overall, the first quality impression is actually quite decent. And then the headroom, when I'm sitting here with one with a six or six with one, still some headroom left. Interior overview, here with the soft touch dashboard and in the RS line here with this carbon fiber styling and they, they really did it in a you know, very great and sophisticated way. It looks really real. Then. You have different options as for the screen. Here in the center part, you either get a 7-inch screen, which is more horizontally oriented, or this bigger 9.3-inch screen, which is vertically oriented. Some more deals to that. On the left side, you start with analog gauges with 5.2-inch small screen in the middle. These here are the optional, well then included in the high rims, full digital 10.25-inch instruments. Some more deals to that. Steam wheel, once again shifting pedals, then the red contrast, right side to control something of the instruments, and left side to control the cruise control. Further on the right side, um, but you know, between here, you know, the screen and the steering wheel is the start stop engine button with a nice metal knurling. And what you can just hardly see, there's different, you know, another column here on the right side where you can. Um, switch or toggle the song list and also have a volume control so behind the steering wheel. Taking a look at the digital instruments, they're very clear to read. You can also change the brightness left next to the steering wheel, for example. And then you can also have a GPS view, if you like, all over the place that you have the GPS map in your line of sight. And if you switch to the sport mode, for example, the gauges also adapt and have then this centralized RPM and speed view. Infotainment screen, you can see here the Apple CarPlay integration. It also has a quite clear display overall. Um, I would like a, you know, like a turning volume knob. So this store column behind the steering wheel is not the best, I think. But the Bose sound system here is actually quite decent. So yeah, I like it. So it has a typical Bose sound as well. You know what I mean. Hard to describe, but if you have a Bose sound system at home or in a car, you know what I mean. And then let's go back to the Renault system. You can also have the car internal GPS, which is, I mean, from the visualization, not the most fancy one, but it does the job. You see it's also responsive enough, so fast enough. So I've really reworked the whole infotainment system thing. As for the rear seats, well, it's a compact SUV. Is there any compromise as for headroom and for leg space and so on? And now I'll try a thing. I watch the camera keeping your connection right here and then still find the right door. Yeah, that was a good choice. <laughs> so, and here we go. Inside of the doors here is hard pack on the top part, then soft here for your elbows and so on. Also electric levers for the windows and even automatic function. Then you can see here the red stitches style also for the rear seats. There we go. And you see in the middle console there is some step and although it's a front wheel driven platform and then you have usb chargers usb a chargers but you already see that legroom wise this probably won't be the best result for today let's see um yeah i somewhat fit in here very closely but yeah i do hit the front seat with my knees when i'm driving so the packaging is not the best so you should just be a little bit smaller than me headroom wise however this directly fits so headroom wise no problem and the overall seating position is not not bad here actually also quite upright 
Just you should be a little bit shorter as for the legs. What about that trunk? Is there a compromise because of this building style? It's a manual hatch here, but just fine with that. Good gas struts right and left. You have this cover here, but you can also remove it. And you see here, very well usable still. It's not too high, at least in this setup, because here there is this even loading sill, so that it's easier to load things in and out. About a little bit over 500 liters, up to 1,300 liters when you fold the seats. And the true hybrid version then has 70 liters less. Here in this setup here, it can be a little bit tricky with putting the backpack because that way it would not fit. You have to put it a little bit more inward then. However, you can also remove this whole thing. You can either flip it up like this and then you can put things underneath or you can completely take it out. That would be possible too. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the all new Renault Arcana or Arcana. Told you initially, however, you want to uh, yeah, say. And we start here with a little urban driving, get up to the motorway, and then also some countryside driving. Here, starting with the steering, you see I don't have to steer that much, it's really easy to steer. It doesn't give me the best connected feeling, but it's actually quite okay. Here maybe it's you new. Know, it lets you lay a little bit. That is of course more relaxed for running straight. Um, it's not that progressive, but overall I think quite okay. The perforated structure here also gives you gives you a good grip here on, on the steering. As for the overview, you know you have this SUV coupe building style. That means to the rear there's just a tiny no very f uh, flat window to look through but you can still see things and to the sides it's okay the b pillar is quite thick as usually with you know with the cars nowadays but you also have the blind spot monitor we will see that in action also pretty soon oh there's another arcana little traffic light right here same color <laughs> so and then a little bit slalom like you already you feel that the suspension is actually yeah, quite stiff, quite sporty. And this is also supposed to set it apart a little bit from the normal SUV siblings in the Renault portfolio. If you think about the Kacha and the Colliers, the car is here between them lengthwise. But from the whole design and also from the driving part, it's more in a sporty orientation. Here, once again, 70 kilometers an hour. It's, yeah, it feels actually even pretty direct as for the suspension. Yeah, but again, steering feel not the most connected one. As for the noise insulation, now we're getting towards 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, and so far it's reasonably silent. We will also drive a little bit faster pretty soon, but so far pretty happy with that. I mean, the design itself looks really like streamlined, um, and yeah, so far holding also the promise. You still have an upright seating position. You feel that you would be driving an SUV, or at least a crossover, so that's really likable that you don't get any lower back pain or something when you drive longer trips. And also the dual clutch transmission, which is standard in here. We're driving the 140 horsepower version of the pure petrol engine for this vehicle, which gives also a lot of calmness and relaxed feeling in here. It's not a car to do racing, Although it looks quite sporty on the exterior, here now at a reasonable motorway speed, it's really relaxing. You just rely on the dual clutch transmission right there, nice noise insulation so far, and the upright seating position, indeed a very relaxed feeling. And then to our initial question, you know, you want that SUV coupe feeling or design from the exterior especially, you want a comfortable interior, but you're not willing to pay so much money and I have to say also driving wise I mean we have experienced more exclusive cars no doubt about that but considering the price of this vehicle it's really very good price performance they are offering right here lane change the car is not shaking up too much so here still pretty stable as for suspension and I also didn't notice any back pain as for suspension yet either, so 
it's not like fierce bumps would be transported to your spine directly through or something. Then we can also let us drop back a little bit and see what about the acceleration when we are already at speed. So first of all, let's check the consumption figure before we do the, yeah, it's about, about seven liters at the moment. So and now I'll wait until the road is straight. So we don't have any bias when going downhill or uphill or something. There we go. And I leave it in normal D mode so far. Let's go. Twenty, one thirty, and one hundred fifty kilometers an hour. So you see, it's not a very quick engine. It takes some time till the turbo sets in, also until the downshift shift is happening. But you still, you know, due to the turbo, you can accelerate on the motorway. And here, still at you know about one hundred forty kilometers an hour now, so like 80, 85 miles an hour still reasonably silent so it's not that the wind noise would be picking up too much actually so and once again very stable here also at the higher speed gives a very good calm and collective feeling so together with all the factors I mentioned I could very well imagine also driving a longer motorway trip here with the new Arcana again not the most silent vehicle we've been testing recently but once again you have consider the price and the price performance ratio we really have to say from the look and feel we have here also it's influencing you while driving from stability we experience here and so on and then I can also you know, I can also just be fine with not having the most powerful acceleration also so very very well done Once again lane change it's actually also quite fun to steer it around. And what's also interesting are these driving modes. You have a button here, like a flower symbol in the middle console. So my sense, or multi sense, and it's the topic. And you can put it to sports mode, and then the digital gauges they change, and that a little bit. The RPM meter is bigger, and then there's also better throttle input from 30 kilometers to 70. Oh, that's it. So, yeah, you also heard that the gears are turned up higher than for this. So, yeah, what's happening? Ambient lighting is changing, instruments are changing, powertrain then more throttle input and also shifting, shifting up later, shifting down earlier. And also the steering here in the normal My Sense mode is really soft. And in the sports mode, you have a little bit more resistance, you know. For me, I think that's a little bit better than in this case. And there's also the eco mode that would then be the di difference, you know, opposite side of it, reduced throttle input then for that. But let's stay in the sport mode for a second. So we can also, for example, accelerate out of this roundabout. It's always a good test to have these roundabouts. Yeah, a little bit more feedback now in the steering wheel, but that doesn't change you know, the whole characteristic, just a little bit. But throttle input in these is increased and the shifting does make a difference since you can only get these here as the automatic versions. Of course, this then also has an effect. These driving modes usually don't affect that much anything, you know, when you have the manual driving. So also interesting to have these sporty driving modes. So if you want a little bit more tuned to that, you can then pick that sports mode. And now to our conclusion for the day with the Renault Arcana. First of all, exterior, a very central styling and they really have oriented their design on the existing, very popular SUV coupes, especially in the RS line, of course, a very sporty, central look. Still, this segment here is splitting in love or hate, really polarizing. I would like to know from you in the comment section, are you on the love or on the hate side as for the SUV coupes? Interior, now with a more sophisticated styling if you compare all the Renault models. So overall, a good build quality and you also get animal-free seating in the lower trim levels. The space you have on the interior, not so much on the rear bench, 
but the trunk is very well usable. Overall, a decent size here for the vehicle. As for driving, well, this small petrol engine here today, it doesn't give you a big power boost. It doesn't sound that cool. Yeah, that's maybe the one downside. So it just takes until the car gets going and then it doesn't sound that sophisticated. But other than that, it is indeed an overall sophisticated driving feeling as for suspension, as for the noise insulation and so on. And yeah, that's the best thing about this vehicle. It's overall a very, very good price performance offering and starting even lower than 30,000 euros, and of course more than 30,000 euros when you have some equipment in it. It's one of the best or maybe the best price performance offering in this SUV Coupe segment. So of course there are here and there are some downsides. Consumption by the way is something 6 to 7 liters or more kilometers. So 30 mpg US, 40 mpg UK. But although we have some downsides, which is no wonder at all, considering the price of this vehicle, this is a super decent offering and I'm quite sure it will be very successful. Again, polarizing this whole segment. Is it something for you? Tell me in the comments and I hope you enjoyed our episode for today. See you next time.